Bitcoin has seen an aggressive short-term correction to 26.3k. Will Bitcoin on the short term continue lower or are we finding support? Let's go ahead and jump into the video. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Bitcoin on the short term, discussing the recent price action, next potential move, and of course, running a complete technical and structural analysis. We'll also go over the macro charts momentarily and discuss everything in between. Before we do get into it, smash that like button, hit the comment button, and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts, the data, the technical and structural information, and the relevant economic news. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you are interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You'll get access to charts, videos, updates, educational posts, news events, and everything you need to stay in the loop with cryptocurrency, with Bitcoin, and the relevant economic data. If you are interested in joining our trading channel, we post exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, trade justification, and charts for our trades. If you're interested in joining the VIP channel, getting access to all of our trades with over 600 members, including access to a variety of chats, our trade setup chat, our help chat, our video chat, our news chat, our, our trading and chart education chat, and of course our general chat, you can go ahead and contact me via the pinned comment in the free channel to go ahead and get access. Let's dive into the video guys, starting on the market data. How are we looking for today? Volume is up 26.16%, sitting at 24 billion. 24-hour liquidations are up 67%, sitting at a total of 24 million. September is currently sitting in the green, just slightly at 2.13% in the green. Of course, with six days remaining in September, it's going to be very interesting to see how September actually closes. Moving toward those liquidations, we can see of the 24 million in liquidations, 15.5 came from longs and 8.9 came from shorts. Moving over to our volatility index, we can see the 60 day volatility index has been pushing sideways, but slightly downwards. And the 30 day volatility index is doing more or less the same thing. We saw a little bit of a push upwards, but for the last five or six days, we've been pushing sideways. Moving back to that volatility and back to those liquidations, we can see on the short term, we saw a little bit of a surge in liquidations and volatility. Of course, if you watched our video yesterday, you would have caught this move absolutely perfectly. We discussed a horizontal range. We told you guys about how that we expected that any move above this level, provided the momentum and the volume did not validate the breakout, should have been considered a false break and an opportunity to short. And our target was this red box. You can see how we perfectly rejected from that level, crashed very quickly, liquidated a whole heap of longs and reached that target perfectly. If you watched yesterday's video, if you caught that move, congratulations, congratulations, <clears throat> excuse me, you were paying attention. But before we get into Bitcoin any further, but before we talk about the next move of Bitcoin, before we talk about everything on the charts, let's talk about the DXY and the stock market. So the DXY has seen again a daily candle close out green. We are opening up very, very slightly green over here, still looking like we are pushing upwards. The DXY is in a very very important position. This is going to be the macro level of resistance. This red box area between 105 to 106. If we break above this level, we enter a macro bullish, a macro bullish trend for the DXY. And of course, if the macro bullish trend is started, if the DXY continues up on a high time frame, we are very likely to see Bitcoin and the stock market correct even further downward. Again, that could be very aggressive for these markets if the DXY does actually enter this macro bullish trend. Until then, <clears throat> resistance is resistance until it is not. And therefore, we do not expect an immediate breakout. We actually do expect some sort of short-term pullback. And again, that is because the resistance is simply resistance until it is not. If we do see a correction, the correction should not be expected until 
the uptrending line of support is lost. This diagonal black line will have to be lost first before the probabilities of rejection are in favor in comparison to a probability of the continuation upwards. So the black line is lost, expect a correction toward this second level of support. The reason we save a second level of support is because we draw a measured move, which is going to be <clears throat> the width of the channel applied to the breakdown point. We can see that would take us down to around this level of support. Therefore, if we do break this uptrend, we can expect a correction to 103.5. However, if the DXY continues upwards, specifically breaking through 106, that would result in a high time frame continuation upwards. How high could we go? That's for another video, guys. And again, if we do continue upwards, that would be very, very bearish for assets. Moving to the S&P 500, we can see we are correcting on the short term. We are coming down. We are entering this range of confluence. So again, the range of confluence is the conversion point between the uptrending diagonal trend line, the horizontal base of support, and of course, this peak on the VRPV. This is still going to be the area of which we expect the price to correct to, which is around 4,330 to 4,300. If we lose that level, guys, if we lose that level, that would be incredibly bad for S&P. Again, if we take a measured move of the width of this channel, apply it to a perceived breakdown point, that could take us all the way down to retest 4,000. Again, guys, very, very, very bad if that happens. And again, that is very unlikely to happen unless the DXY continues upwards. Moving to the S&P 500, sorry, moving on to the Dow Jones. We can see the Dow Jones has actually already broken through this, hot, this diagonal level of support. This support level has been actually uh, going on since September 2022. So about 11 to 12 months now, this horizontal, uh, this diagonal support has provided the overall trend for the Dow Jones. We've actually officially broken below this level, potentially developing a huge, huge wedge formation. Again, if we do break down from this wedge, the diagonal distance or the, the directional move from that is going to be the wedge low towards the upper level applied to the breakdown. It could take us all the way back down to these levels okay that is provided the dow jones continues downward through this cluster of support it is provided that the s p 500 continues downwards it is provided that the dow jones actually continues upwards so all in all the whole point of this is to show that the overall traditional markets are actually looking relatively weak here they're not looking too strong and as the dxy gains even more strength that weakness could even become greater and going over to bitcoin guys in a second we can see that on the macro charts bitcoin isn't looking that that fantastic either i wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel bitget and bing x so which exchange should you sign up to if you look to the right hand side of the screen you're going to see the list of differences in relation to kyc requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to the first link down below being the BitGet link, and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to $5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for their users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. So let's talk about the macro charts really quickly. And then we're getting to the crux of today's analysis, which is really centered around the short term price action. But to show you guys how weak Bitcoin really is looking, if we're taking a look at this weekly chart, we're going to see a few indicators. And these indicators primarily taking a look at is a bull market support band. We can see a weekly candle. This is the second weekly candle, in fact, actually, that has actually attempted to break back above that bull market support band, but has failed. This weekly candle will be closing in 45 minutes guys 45 minutes so we can say with a great degree of certainty that this weekly candle is going to be another rejection from that bull mark support band the bull mark support band is a great high time frame tool to tell us the overall relative strength of bitcoin in comparison to prior price action meaning 
when the price action is situated below the bull mark support band, this is showing weakness, okay, compared to when the price is sitting above it, which is showing relative strength. And of course, this weakness can also be defined as a downtrend, and the strength can also be defined as a uptrend. So right now, the bull mark support band is suggesting we are showing not only weekly weakness, but we are in a weekly downtrend. Moving on from there, we can look at the, uh, the marks of the A. We can see once again, we have rejected for the second time from all these smaller time frame move averages. We rejected from the 50, okay, we rejected from the main one, which is that 50, the red line. We rejected from the 25, we rejected from the 17, the 4, the 32. I've got all these different move averages here, which we can take a look at, that we've rejected and failed to break above. Again, the moving averages represent two things. Number one, overall volatility. So the larger distance between the 50 and the price action, the greater the volatility. And number two, it represents relative strength. So we can see that we have a weak, we have weakness as we are underneath these moving averages. We are in this downtrend as we are underneath these moving averages. But since the price is so tightly connected to them, we don't have a lot of volatility. So we are in a weekly downtrend, although this weekly downtrend is not a vo very volatile downtrend, which can tell us two things. Number one, we are consolidating in this downtrend before the next move, or number two, we are simply only beginning this current move before the price actually really starts to kick off in the direction of which it wants to go. So both aren't really too uh, amazing to think about when you think about it like that. Moving over to the Gaussian channel, we can see the Gaussian channel is very much bearish. We have entered the Gaussian channel from the top side down. A break from the top side into the Gaussian channel is a shift in direction. So this is a uptrend into a downtrend, okay? This is a downtrend into a uptrend. So we, when we break through the direction, when we break through the midline, sorry, the upper or lower band, depending on where we were before we broke, we'll determine a shift in direction. So from an uptrend to a downtrend, we break from above to below, from a downtrend to an uptrend when we break from below to above, okay? So we are definitely in a overall downtrend according to the Gaussian channel. Furthermore, for the downtrend to be flipped into a uptrend, we need to break above that level again. So 28.4k level is a major level of resistance we need to break back above to show strength and actually continue this weekly uptrend. If we fail to do so, and we break below the midline prior to breaking below this up band, we are very, very likely to actually continue through the Gaussian channel toward the downside. So as we're seeing from those three indicators, we are seeing some high time frame weakness. If we show you two more, the marker cipher B is showing us weakness again. We have overall negative momentum. If we take a look at the zero point line, anything below zero point is negative. Anything below zero point is above is positive. So right now, we can see that the blue wave is sitting just under around negative 10.14, so we do have negative momentum. Moving to the RSI, again, the RSI is in the negative as a price action is below this RSI level of resistance. It is sitting down over here, again, representative of falling negative momentum. So until the price action really starts to muster some strength and push the price above its trigger points, it is very unlikely Bitcoin is continuing upwards, but we'll discuss that in just a moment anyway. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more thing on the high time frame, and then the rest of the video is short term, short term moves, technical analysis, and of course the next move for Bitcoin. So short term, again, for Bitcoin to really start mustering that strength, for it to really start going upwards, for it to really break that weekly downtrend, again, for us to flip from this weekly bearish trend which we're in to a weekly bullish trend, we have to, we absolutely have to break above this diagonal downtrending resistance. This diagonal downtrending resistance marks the current trajectory of price action. It represents the downtrend we have been in ever since the 12th of July. Now, a lot of people are saying the DXY is not correlated to Bitcoin. The DXY is very correlated. Uh, it is, of course, not correlated. It has a opposing correlation, okay, an inverted correlation to Bitcoin. We can see from the 12th of July, that downtrend has started. If we go over to DXY, we can see from the 12th of July, on the day, on the same day that Bitcoin reached resistance, the Dow, uh, the DXY reached support. And you can see ever since it's been in an uptrend, Bitcoin has been in a downtrend, guys. So that is why we use the DXY for strength of a dollar to help us set a tone or set the narrative, okay, of high time frame price action, okay? 
It's not going to tell you what percentage Bitcoin is going to move down. It's not going to tell you Bitcoin is going down 20%, but it's going to tell you the general trajectory of price action over a perceived period of time. And it's very, very powerful if used correctly. So moving to price action for Bitcoin to enter a weekly bullish trend, it has to break above this diagonal downtrend. If we break above the diagonal downtrend, some of the indicators we just discussed on a higher time frame will start to look a little bit more bullish, okay? The bull mark support band will likely break through it. The 50 EMA will likely break through it. The momentum will turn slightly positive. The RSI, I don't think would yet turn positive, okay? And the boom and the Gaussian channel would not yet turn positive. But what it would show, it would show strength. It would show the bulls are putting in some strength, putting in some work to really try to turn that trend around. But until we see that, again, we do have a downtrend. The downtrend is expected to continue until it is not. Remember, the trend is your friend until it ends, and therefore expect the trend to continue until we have validation that that trend has ended. So moving over to some indicators over here, if we take a look at the RSI we can see a potential warning sign here. And this is not a good thing at all. If we take the relative levels of resistance, okay, from the price action chart, apply it to the RSI, which is here and here, you can see this arrows at the top, we can see we had an early breakout on the RSI, meaning momentum turned positive, but the price action was not able to break through resistance. Now we are seeing momentum actually spin back around. If we see the momentum break down from this up trending diagonal trend line, we will see momentum flip negative. If you see the RSI lose this trend line, the probabilities of a breakdown of 24.4 to 25.2 massively increase. And you're probably thinking, Oh, whale, that is so stupid. That doesn't make any sense. Let's look back in time. We have seen prior structural levels break. Look at this level. We had our support over here, support over here. We had our support over here, support over here. And then we saw the breakdown on the RSI. When did the breakdown occur? Let's draw a horizontal line. The breakdown occurred three days prior to the price action dropping like 15% down to 25.2. Momentum, if used correctly, is a leading indicator for price action. It is not lagging, it is leading. Okay, let's move over to short-term price action. What have we seen? <clears throat> As discussed in yesterday's video, we have expected this very move to play out. So you paid attention, you watched the video, you would have either already been in a short from up over here, okay, as we took shorts up over here, we're still in those shorts, or if you got in late, you would have got in shorts over here, and you would have looked for a target down here. So either way, you played it perfectly, you made profit, congratulations. Again, very important you pay attention to these videos, because we give you a lot of really good hints on what we're doing and what you should be doing in these videos. So right now, if you take a look at what is happening, it is actually very clear, okay? It is very, very clear. What we had was a horizontal consolidation, a sideways consolidation. This was our horizontal range. Perfect. Excellent. We broke down from that range. We retested our base of support, 26.3k. Easy. We came up. We rejected from that level, okay? Resistance becomes support, okay? Resistance becomes support, support becomes resistance. We flipped that level. <clears throat> you can see how we flipped that level of support. We are now pushing upwards and we are very, very likely to continue deep within this level of support. We are very likely to come back down into this level of support. But this is where it gets very interesting, guys. Okay? If we fail to hold this level of support, Okay, it's 26.2 <clears throat> to 26.3k level. We are incredibly likely to push all the way down to retest the high time frame range low. Remember, this is our consolidation range. Okay, that is our consolidation range. We had deviation above, we had deviation above. We had deviation below. If you almost eliminate, so just scribble them out, eliminate these pieces of data, we are still pushing sideways. So as we come upwards in this range and touch resistance, when we reject from resistance, that is when the trend flips, right? We flip the trend at resistance. So we are currently in a short-term downtrend. 
that downtrend will continue until one or two things happen. Number one, we reach demand strong enough to bounce the price up with supply, sorry. Or number two, we reach the range low. So number one, we bounce from 26.2 to 26.3 and continue upwards. Or number two, we lose the support and we continue all the way down. Hypothetically, if we bounce from this level, we are technically still in a downtrend until Bitcoin's price is able to get above 26.8. So if we do see a bounce from this level, we are still in a downtrend until the price is able to get above 26.8k and therefore i wouldn't be jumping into long straight away i wouldn't be really jumping in on any smaller bounce i'd be still looking more toward the downside okay if we lose 25.6 which is this lower base of support that is when we continue through this range now the reason i say we will not hold support here again is because if we go back to our daily chart we can see we have this uptrend of the rsi guys so if we lose this uptrend of the rsi we will have lost that uptrend prior to the retest of the support. And if we do enter a retest of this support with negative momentum, the probabilities of a breakdown increase. Thank you for watching. Check out the Crypto Academy courses, guys. A 10-year course we developed to teach you guys how to trade and, of course, develop your trading skills. If you're interested, check it out. It's down below. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.